Uh, my name is Jeb Sankofa. I'm a PhD student in African American Studies and American Studies, and I study 20th century policing and prisons. Uh, well, the talk I gave today was a chapter of my dissertation called Delinquent Migrations. And what I'm doing is tracing young people who left home, began working between ages 9 and 15, and trying to better understand how their migration journeys might differ from the traditional narratives. And what's very interesting about these young people is that they were not the heads of households. They often traveled alone. They had to find food. And so what I'm also trying to map is sort of the development of like professionalized policing and sort of how does like policing impact their migration patterns when being a delinquent or being young is actually a crime. Uh, well, I experiment with like Cardo D, um, Cardo, and also um, S3 story maps, and also like experimenting with um, video, which was like through sort of I'm trying to give a documentary and sort of um, tone to the website. And so the larger digital storytelling website will be like on one hand mapping, story mapping, but on the other hand being able to like interact with the, whoever's watching it with like short documentary stories about their lives and trying to use like newspaper articles and other records like census to put into like a visual story. Oh, it's been awesome. I mean, the reason I say awesome because like, I actually never really thought about DH methods and I just kind of came in with a project on migrations. And so I've kind of run into the DHL lab like in three classes. And so when I seen that there was these resources that could help me with the project, um, I just kept going over to the DHL lab like weekly and then I got a Digital Humanities C grant. And that helped me with sort of having someone work with me on data input. Because that was something I actually, I still don't know how to do as much as putting like geographical locations into an Excel and transferring that to like story maps. And so that was like great thing to do. Yeah, so that's my experience with DHL. Yeah. Yeah, so my name is Colin Jamez. I'm a, an undergraduate junior um, studying art history and biomedical engineering. Um, and so I'm here to, to sort of present a project that I've been thinking about um, pertaining to sort of the way that scientific imagery operates in, in artistic spheres. So what I've been asking myself recently is, is how does scientific imagery operate in artistic and cultural spheres? How do artists sort of pick, on, pick up on the kind of imagery that, that scientists produce? Um, and an interesting case study of that has been the uh, imagery that's produced out of the nuclear weapons testing era here in the United States. Um, so between 1945 and 1963, lots of imagery, videos, photographs were produced. Um, lots of new photographic techniques were developed um, and, and lots of new sort of philosophies and ways of thinking about photography were, were um, kind of arose and artists sort of picked up on that in, in interesting ways, so I've been exploring that. I'm Polly, um, third person here, and this was a coursework we had um, in uh, algorithmic music composition. The benefit of algorithmic mu music is you can define, um, you can get unexpected music that, that even the composer didn't expect, but you would want it still to sound pleasing, uh, and we thought one framework for pleasing would be harmonic, varying, directional, and cohesive. Um, so we developed a framework where we have module systems that try to simulate a jazz ensemble. My name is John Harford. I work at the Center for Teaching and Learning, and we're working with the Babylonian Collection to showcase a throne room at Nimru uh, by a VR uh, for people to uh, experience. So the background of this project came about from our interaction with Annette Lawson, who's in the Babylonian collection here at the library. Uh, she was interested in bringing uh, students into a VR setting to view uh, objects that were destroyed by ISIS in the, uh, in the Palmyra ruins in Syria. Uh, the, the project came together very quickly uh, and we partnered with a, um, a firm in Massachusetts that constructed the throne room at uh, Nimrud um, 
and we're we're bringing art uh, art history students through this space to for them to see and witness some of the reliefs that you see scattered across uh, museums and exhibits all over the world collected together in in the location where it originally existed so that they can see it in the context of the room that that those objects existed in and get a sense of space and light it's it's just i mean wow all i can say is wow <laughs>